Hi there. The concepts that we're going to be talking about in this one, part one and part two of this idea is from chapter 15 in McConnell, that's the money and banking stuff. We're going to be talking about deposit creation, which is the core of the process by which the Federal Reserve controls the money supply. I'm going to talk about the building blocks of this first. And what I've got on the board here is something called a T account. There's a big T in the middle here, which is what gives it its name. A T account is a way to list the assets, liabilities, and net worth, which I'm not worried about for this particular example for a bank. And I'm going to use the T account framework to discuss multiple deposit creation and to show you how banks create money, the core of the process by which the Fed can affect what they do and control the money supply. Banks have two main categories here that we're going to be concerned about, two main categories of, of um, financial instruments, assets and liabilities. Remember that we're talking about this from the viewpoint of the bank, not from you or I. On the asset side of the bank, the two that we're going to be most concerned about for this example are bank reserves and loans. And these are loans that the bank makes, the bank as the lender. Reserves we'll talk about more in just a moment. The liabilities of the bank are deposits, and these are deposits that you or I might have in the bank. So this can be, for example, a checking account, it could be a savings account, It might be a CD. Any kind of deposit that you might have in the bank is going to qualify in this category. Now, it's a liability for the bank. My checking account in this bank is an asset for me, but it's a liability for the bank because, for example, the bank has to give it back to me whenever I want. One of the names for a checking account is called a demand deposit, and demand deposits mean that the bank must give you back your money on demand. So deposits as a liability for the bank and assets that the banks hold, reserves and loans. We're going to come back to this in just a moment. Over here, I've got a definition for you that's also coming out of the same chapter, and that's the required reserve ratio. The required reserve ratio is the fraction of a bank's deposits that they must keep as cash or in their Fed account on hand at all times. So the banks can't just do anything they want with all of your money. They must keep a portion of that, a relatively small portion, aside is what's called their required reserves. Now back here, these deposits that the bank has, your deposit and my deposit, are going to funnel into the asset side in the following way. Suppose that this bank has $100,000 worth of deposits and the required reserve ratio that we just got finished talking about is 10%. What that means is that this bank has to hold on hand, portion off a required bit of that, 10% of 100 is $10,000, and the rest of it, they can do what they want. They might be able to, at any particular point in time, for example, loan out that. If they have good creditworthy customers and appropriate interest rates, those deposits get funneled into in this very simple example, two places for the bank. Part of them goes into the reserves that they've got to hold, and the rest of them they can do what they want with and loan out. Now, this minimum required reserve doesn't mean that they must hold that. They can hold more at any point in time if they'd like. They're not supposed to hold less, and they could get in some trouble if they do, but that's the minimum, okay? These are the bare bones concepts that we'll need to talk about deposit creation, and for that we're gonna go to part two.